Hello everyone, I am Dr. Monica. Welcome to my YouTube channel Pathology Learning. So today's topic will be on mechanism of apoptosis. This is the second part in the uh, apoptosis series. So in the previous video, we saw the basics of apoptosis and what are the enzymes that is the caspases involved in uh, the apoptosis, then the genes, the pro-apoptotic, anti-apoptotic and the BH3 only sensor uh, proteins which were responsible for the balance in uh, apoptosis and homeostasis. So in today's video, we will be discussing about the uh, mechanisms of apoptosis. So apoptosis was because of two mechanisms, initiation mechanism, initiation which will then lead to the execution phase. Initiation was again subclassified into intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway. So first we will deal with the extrinsic pathway. So extrinsic pathway is the one which is also called as the death receptor pathway. Right. So what happens? Suppose this is the cell I had drawn it. Uh, so this is the cell on which the cell membrane has some receptors called as CD95 or FAS. FAS is also called as CD95. These are actually a part of the TNF family of receptors and they are, and they are also called as death receptors and that is why this pathway has been called as the death receptor pathway. So uh, these uh, CD95 they have an cytoplasmic component each of which is associated with a cytoplasmic component. Now I bring a cell here. So this is a T cell and this T cell is going to have its FAS ligand. FAS ligand or CD95 ligand. So this ligand present on the T cell is coming and this uh, CD95 uh, ligand or the FAS ligand will get attached to this receptor CD95 and that will result in the activation of this uh, CD95 receptor. So this activation will actually result in the trimerization of these CD95 or the FAS receptors. So when these undergo trimerization, this will actually activate the certain protein called as FAD, FADD, FAD. So this FAD will then activate the inactive pro-caspase enzyme into the active caspase enzyme, which is the caspase 8. So we already saw that extrinsic pathway involves the activation of caspase 8 and 10, in which 10 is the uh, caspase which is present in the humans. So this will finally result in the activation of caspase 8. Now we are done with extrinsic pathway. One thing I like to highlight here is I mentioned it was a T cell over here, right? So uh, we saw an example of physiological uh, apoptosis that T cells, these are the ones which are responsible for uh, killing the virus infected or the tumor cells. So this extrinsic pathway is the one major pathway in uh, virus killing and tumor killing, tumor cell killing, okay? So now we had seen about extrinsic pathway. Finally, the caspase 8 was activated over here. So moving on to intrinsic pathway, it is also called as the mitochondrial pathway because it happens in the mitochondrium. It is the most common and the most important pathway also. So this is the cell again and here we are seeing this uh, mitochondria with the criste. Okay. So uh, whenever there is a cell injury, when cell injury is there, it will be sensed by the BH3 only proteins, which I had told about it in the previous video. These BH3 only proteins are the uh, sensors of the cell stress. So these are BIM, BED, BAD, PUMA, NOXA, all these things, right? So this will uh, recognize that the cell is injured now. So what will happen? It will change the balance of the pro-apoptotic and anti-apoptotic genes now. So it will tend to increase the pro-apoptotic genes and decrease the anti-apoptotic genes. So the pro-apoptotic genes were back and backs while the anti-apoptotic gene the main component was the BCL2. So BCL2 will go down now and back and backs will be upregulated. So when this back and backs get activated, it tends to form oligomers. Okay, These back and back will form uh, oligomers and they will themselves get introduced into the outer mitochondrial membrane and this will increase the mitochondrial membrane permeability. So permeability is increased 
because they are forming the channels and so the uh, uh, channels permeability will be increased so whatever was present inside the mitochondria will now leak out into the cytoplasm and the most important of which is the cytochrome c cytochrome c which was present inside the mitochondria and uh, it is actually involved in oxidative phosphorylation now the cytochrome c will now leak out of the uh, mitochondria into the cytoplasm and it will combine with the protein called as apaf1 it is nothing but apoptosis activating factor one so these two will combine and it will actually these two together is called as the apoptosome this will form an apoptosome this apoptosome actually has a wheel like hexamer and it has been asked once in an mcq apoptosome what is the apoptosome it is actually cytochrome c plus apaf1 so this combination is called as apoptosome so now the apoptosome is now formed what will happen apoptosome will activate caspase 9 pro caspase 9 into active caspase 9 so caspase 9 was the enzyme which was uh, the final product of the intrinsic pathway there is something called as inhibitor of apoptosis which is present normally in the cell okay cell cytoplasm has this inhibitor of uh, apoptosis iap is inhibitor of apoptosis normally the cell is prevented by apoptosis because this inhibitor of apoptosis keeps the caspases under check it uh, it prevents their activation it is kept in their inactive state now once this uh, stress uh, cell injury has been active uh, coming and it's uh, this mitochondrial pathway is activated this inhibitor of apoptosis must undergo inhibition only then this pathway can happen right so along with cytochrome c there was also something called as a smac diablo complex smac diablo complex this will come and inhibit this inhibitor of apoptosis so smac diablo is actually pro apoptotic okay so it, it is inhibiting the inhibitor of apoptosis so it is actually pro apoptotic now we saw intrinsic pathway has been finally activated which has led to the formation of active caspase 9. One thing I forgot to mention, uh, it was in the extrinsic pathway, it was the flip protein which was a flip protein which inhibits this conversion of pro caspase 8 into active caspase 8. So flip flip was the inhibitor of extrinsic pathway, inhibitor of extrinsic pathway. So we saw pro caspase 8 and 10 converting into active caspase 8 and 10 in extrinsic pathway and intrinsic pathway was the active caspase 9 which has formed now. Now initiation phase is completed. So these activated caspases 9, 8 and 10 will now result in the execution. Execution phase is carried out by the caspases 3, 6 and 7. So these yeah, initiator caspases will now activate the execution caspases, caspases 3, 6 and 7 of which caspase 3 is the most important. So these activated execution caspases will now activate certain enzymes like proteases and endonucleases. Proteases are responsible for breaking down the cytoskeletal protein. Endonuclease, it is the most important enzyme here. So endonucleases will result in the cleavage of the nucleus. So it will result in something called as the internucleosomal cleavage. So internucleosomal cleavage is one which is responsible for nuclear chromatin condensation. And nuclear chromatin condensation is the characteristic feature of apoptosis. So when this endonuclease actually breaks the nucleus into one uh, base pairs of 180 to 200 base pairs, okay, 180 to 200 base pairs of nuclear fragments are formed, and this is termed as internucleosomal cleavage, which is responsible for the nuclear chromatin condensation. So nuclear chromatin condensation is seen. Actually, when these proteases, endonucleases are activated, this nucleus is uh, forming this nuclear chromatin condensation. At the same time, there is this formation of something called as the apoptotic body. So what are these apoptotic bodies? These are actually membrane bound, that is the cell membrane bound organelles with, with or a, without a nucleus. Okay. So this is the exact de definition of apoptotic body. The most important keyword in this is the membrane bound. So the membrane is not damaged here. So there will be no inflammation. I keep on repeating this again and again so that uh, you remember it. Okay. So the final uh, execution thing which led to the formation of this apoptotic body. 
so what happens this apoptotic body with this membrane in the membrane it has many phospholipids right so one such phospholipid is a phosphatidyl serine this phosphatidyl serine which was actually normally present in the inner leaflet of the cell membrane has now flipped and it's it has come to the outer aspect of the uh, cell membrane now so this is the now the in the apoptotic body the phosphatidyl serine is now seen on the outer surface and this what is the significance of this it actually makes uh, the apoptotic body juicy you can call it as juicy so that it is attracting someone to come and kill it okay so for that we need something called as a find me signals so what are find me signals these apoptotic body will release certain substances like phosphatidylcholine fractal kind which is actually a chemokine then sphingosine phosphate 1 and some nucleotides like atp and utp so these are released by the apoptotic body and when these are released it will go and attract the macrophages the phagocytic cells to come attract it is attracted towards the site of this apoptotic body so these are invited so these find me signals and uh, eat me signals have been asked in uh, institute papers like uh, Ames and Jipmer. So remember these find me signals are the ones which will attract the macrophages to the site of apoptotic body. Now what will happen is the eat me signals. So these eat me signals are the phosphatidyl serine like I mentioned now this flipping of the phosphatidyl serine right. So phosphatidyl serine cal reticulin and c1q these ones will send these signals so the apoptotic cell cell is having these signals eat me signals and when the phagocyte which has come attracted towards this apoptotic body because of the find me signals will express the receptors for this phosphatidyl serine cal reticulin and c1q so once these two gets binded what will happen is the macrophages which had come to the site of the cell I mean, site of the apoptotic body will phagocytose this apoptotic body macro uh, macrophages phagocyting this apoptotic body is given a special name of ephrocytosis it is a newer concept so listen carefully the phago it is nothing but a phagocytosis only the macrophages are the ones which are phagocyting now the macrophages is phagocyting this apoptotic body is termed as ephrocytosis okay there is something also called as a do not eat me signal. So normally the apoptosis should not happen in a normal cells, right? So in a normal cell or even in a tumor cell which uh, wants to evade from apoptosis, it doesn't want a tumor cell always try to engage some me mechanism so that it can live, right? So a normal cell or a tumor cell which wants to evade this apoptosis will express something called as the do not eat me signals. So those are CD47 and CD31. When these are present on the cell, the phagocytes which will engage this will now recognize that I should not eat this cell. So it will let it go. So do not eat me signals, find me signals and eat me signals. Remember these, these are actually high, high yield uh, questions. So how do you detect this apoptosis? So microscopically on HND section, which is nothing but the normal hematoxylin neosin stain, we can see the characteristic cellular shrinking. The cell will shrink and that will uh, also have a dense eosinophilic cytoplasm like you see here and the nucleus will quite become condensed and pycnotic okay so this nuclear chromatin condensation was the characteristic characteristic of apoptosis the hallmark of apoptosis was caspase activation while the characteristic of apoptosis is nuclear chromatin condensation we also saw an image of councilman body seen in viral uh, hepatitis remember in the previous video we had seen a councilman body which was seen in viral hepatosis it is nothing but an apoptotic body only so the next thing uh, we use for deduction of apoptosis is anaxin 5 this anaxin 5 actually detects the flipping of the phosphatidyl serine so the flip by it all no in the apoptotic body there is this flip of this phosphatidyl serine from the inner to the outer membrane so phosphatidyl serine this flipping is actually detected by a stain called as anaxin 5 and that is called as the marker of apoptosis marker of apoptosis is anaxin 5 uh, do not confuse this anaxin 5 with something called anaxin a1 that is quite different it is a marker for hairy cell leukemia actually i am just mentioning it here so that you don't confuse it okay so hairy cell leukemia has anaxin 5 uh, anaxin a1 sorry anaxin a1 while anaxin 5 is the marker of apoptosis which detects the flip of phosphatidyl serine so 
molecular marker if they ask for marker that is annexin ar5 while if they ask for molecular marker of apoptosis it is cd95 or fast which was the death receptor involved in the extrinsic pathway right so this all can be detected only by molecular methods and that is why it is called as the molecular marker of apoptosis next there are uh, certain other stains also which can detect apoptosis the first one is tunnel staining so this tunnel staining is positive in apoptosis and it is negative in necrosis tunnel staining this dappy staining and then proper propidium iodide stain all of this is positive in apoptosis okay so moving on to the next method which is fret fret is nothing but it uses certain fluorophores to detect the caspase activity so the next one is gel electrophoresis this has been asked as a picture based question also in gel electrophoresis this is the first first image is that of a normal thing, normal cell okay so second one is the showing if you can identify it is showing many breaks over here 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 so all these breaks are nothing but internucleosomal cleavage and it looks like a step ladder right so this pattern is called as a step ladder pattern it is because of the internucleosomal cleavage the dna is getting fragmented into 180 to 200 base pairs of uh, dna ma material so this actually is seen in apoptosis but remember it is not specific for apoptosis because it can also be seen in necrosis okay so the third image if you see this is having like a tongue shaped smearing pattern right like a, p a peripheral smear it is looking like a smeared pattern so this smeared pattern is seen in necrosis so we had come to the conclusion of apoptosis now so to summarize we saw what is apoptosis it is a uh, form of cell death which is called as a programmed cell death because it was tightly regulated by certain genes that is the anti apoptotic pro apoptotic uh, genes and the bh3 only sensor proteins then we saw about the caspases uh, activation of caspase is the hallmark of apoptosis while in neurons uh, since they don't have uh, caspases uh, activation of apoptosis inducing factor is the hallmark of neuronal apoptosis then we saw the characteristic of apoptosis which was nuclear chromatin condensation which happens because of the internucleosomal cleavage and then we saw uh, the cell membrane is always intact in um, apoptosis so there is no associated inflammation and that is quite the opposite of necrosis then we saw about the what are the caspases which are involved in uh, the mechanism of apoptosis that is the initiation then the execution in initiation we read about the intrinsic pathway or the mitochondrial pathway caspase 9 is activated while extrinsic pathway which was the death receptor pathway leading to the activation of caspase 8 and 10 then the execution caspases which was caspase 3 6 and 7 which formed the apoptotic body then we saw about aphorocytosis which is nothing but the phagocytosis of this apoptotic body then finally we saw the methods of detecting this apoptosis so that's it for today's video in the next video we'll be seeing about the other forms of cell death other than necrosis and apoptosis Thanks for watching. If you like my content, consider subscribing and uh, you can also share this video to your friends who might also benefit from this video. Thank you.